Good evening, Facebook Live. And this is Geffen Jones from Synergy Success Network. Uh, and what I'll do is I'm going to do a little live event tonight. And uh, hopefully there'll be a few people that will get some, uh, uh, some co uh, content from the detail that I'm going to give this evening. Uh, before we get started, I'd uh, just like to say a real thank you, a big thank you to Darren Barnes uh, from Wickham Soaps that attended last week. Uh, it was really great to have him as a guest last week, and uh, we got some really, really good feedback and comments from that Facebook Live. Uh, this evening, uh, the Facebook Live is going to be about mindset, change, and Scrooge behaviours. Uh, which I have spoken a little bit about before, uh, which is related to uh, the uh, the mindset coaching that I deliver. Uh, but yeah, before we get started, we're just going to see uh, if some people are going to be attending. Uh, I'll see that we've already got Shara here. Uh, Shara is a great fan. Uh, thank you very much for coming. It's great to see you. Uh, and uh, hopefully that we'll get a few more as we go on. Uh, and then what we do is uh, we'll probably, probably get some other people that will be watching this in the future. Oh, Shiron, Shiron's here as well. I just like that so you can see that there. Uh, so, yeah, so this evening I am going to be talking about mindset, mindset and change. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to do this is because uh, the reason why I'm dressed like I am is because literally I have just got out of prison. Yeah, you know me. I do like going into prison nowadays, uh, which is a little bit uh, a, a, a weird thing to say, but I do. Uh, but the reason why I was in prison today was because I was doing some work with uh, some inmates, or as we like to call them now, residents. Yeah, so we're trying to humanise them a bit. Uh, and what I did was I kind of shared my story uh, and I shared about the change process. Uh, and it's when I kind of start to share these change processes that I really start to get then to have some conversations with the uh, men that I'm speaking to and they start to share uh, what's going on for them uh, and the reasons why that they are where they are. And uh, it was really, really quite interesting because uh, straight away I was able to see the screws behaviors that are getting in the way uh, of these men being able to progress and change their lives and turn them around. Uh, so I'm going to talk about one gentleman in particular. I'm not going to name the prison that I was in. I'm not going to name the person as well uh, because I need to respect his anonymity. Uh, but I am going to kind of share what kind of happened for uh, uh, today when we was in there. So what happened was I shared my story uh, and I shared about how difficult it was for me to change uh, and some of the stuff that I had to go through. And it's these processes that I've transferred into uh, my change development programs, uh, behavior change programs uh, that I've been delivering for quite a number of years. So what kind of happened was uh, I was talking to this gentleman uh, and then he started to say about, uh, about his situation. And his situation was uh, that he'd been involved with the criminal justice system for quite a number of years. And then what happened uh, was he kind of got into a fight, okay, after being out of trouble for about seven years. Uh, and then what happened was when he went to court, uh, he ended up getting a custodial sentence. And he was quite angry about this situation. And the reason why he was angry is because whilst he'd been out for them seven years, he'd made some real big changes in his life. Uh, and he had got himself a job. He was a project manager and he was earning quite good money, uh, which enabled him to sort of like be able to kind of get a nice property. Uh, also, he bought, he'd bought himself a nice car and was going on holidays and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then what happened, like I said, he had this fight uh, and then he ended up going to prison uh, for two years. Hi, Dale. Nice to see you. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so then what it was, was he then became really kind of angry at the way he'd been treated by the courts and the reason why he was in custody. So the first thing I noticed uh, when he was speaking was about he wasn't able to take responsibility, the personal responsibility uh, that he needed to be able to take in relation to the situation that he was in. Uh, and what it was, was I was trying to go for a bit of a conversation with him in relation to him understanding that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how that kind of went, yeah, so that you can kind of see what it is that I'm talking. Hi, Rob. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, I'm just telling a little story about uh, a gentleman that I met in prison today. So, yeah, so what happened was uh, uh, I started to talk to him and, uh, and then we started to talk about change. OK, so there's two kinds of change that I talk about. OK, there's the superficial change. Yeah. And then there's the transformational change. 
Let me explain about the superficial change. The superficial change is everything that we change on the outside. Okay, so what it is, is internally I can be the same, but actually I can go out and buy a suit from Savile Row. I can go and buy some really nice barkers. I can go out and, uh, and uh, get myself a really nice car. I can go on really, really nice holidays. And to the outside world, everything looks great. Okay, but inside, nothing's changed. Because it's a superficial change. So when we kind of talk about how we can really change and move forward in our lives, we have to look at the transformational change. And that happens on the inside. So what happened was when I was speaking to the gentleman uh, and he was kind of talking about all this stuff, I explained. I said, yeah, I said, I really hear what it is that you've said. I said, but what it is, is you just done a superficial change. Because what it was, was you never looked at the behavior that caused the why. Why did you get into that fight? And then what he did was he started to talk a little bit about his life and he talked about growing up in a really violent home uh, around lots and lots of violence and he'd been brought up in violence when he kind of left uh, school. Uh, so there'd been a lot of violence within his life and what it was as well, he'd had his own personal trauma that meant that when he kind of felt threatened, he would respond with violence. Okay, and I said, and this is the reason why. And I said, and even though you've done the superficial change, okay, you as a ticking bomb, okay, because internally nothing had changed. So there was always going to be that time when actually uh, you're going to kind of get into that same situation again. So he kind of started to listen and he's going, yeah, you're right. I kind of get it. I understand. Yeah, kind of is the word yeah so he kinda yeah in there but he's not really hearing it in there in his heart okay uh so then what he did was he started to then carry on yeah he started to carry on uh with uh, the story of why he was the victim hi jason nice to see you uh so he started to carry on about why he was the victim okay and what he was saying yeah 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 but i understand all of that yeah i kind of get what you're saying you know but they didn't take into any any uh, uh they didn't take into any consideration all of the changes that i've done what a good parent i'd become and all of this sort of stuff okay and then what he's going on now it's their fault it's their fault that i'm in here it's their fault that i've lost my job it's their fault that i've now got to kind of look at uh, where i'm going to be living when i get out you know and, and they've really kind of turned my life upside down this my friend is a screws behavior it's a screws behavior that we have in our mind and the screws behavior that was affecting this man was blank because he wanted to blame every other person for his own failings. He wasn't willing to take the personal responsibility of what he maybe needed to change. So what I did is when I kind of do and talk with anyone, even though he's sort of like a violent criminal, yeah, I don't care. I'm going to challenge that behavior because I'm a Scrooge buster. Okay, so I'm challenging that behavior. So what I said to him, I said, yeah, I said, I really get that. I said, but let me ask you this. Who was it that had the fight? Who was it that was in that situation? It wasn't the judge. It wasn't the solicitor. It wasn't anybody else. It was you. You caused the behavior. And you need to take some personal responsibility for that behavior. What you're now blaming and what you're getting angry on is people's response to your negative behavior. And he's kind of looking at me. He doesn't want to fight me, but he's looking at me because he knows that I'm telling the truth. And he's like, yeah, it's me, isn't it? It's me. I went, yeah, it is you. It is you. Okay, so if we kind of really want to look at how you can change and how you can move on, within your life, there's two things you need to do. The first thing is you need to let go of the blame. You need to stop blaming everybody else for your actions because it's your actions that have led you to this point. That's about taking responsibility. Once you take personal responsibility 
and actually realize that you are the problem, then you might then need to look at the behaviors that have led you to this point. And this is kind of how my screws development program works, because what I then kind of explained to him was he really needed to understand and explore his why. So why is it that he gets himself into these situations that kind of lead to violence? Why is it that he is unable to be able to manage and deal with his life in the way that he'd really like to? And he kind of really got this. And, you know, and then after we'd had the conversation and he was kind of like really kind of accepting and he was asking me, so what sort of things is it that I may need to do? And I was kind of like, you know, you, you are in the place at the moment and there's probably not the help that you really need here, uh, you know, but there's lots of stuff that you can do whilst you're here. So what I say to people in prison is don't count the days, but make every day count because there's always something that you can do when you're in custody that's going to support you tomorrow. So I said, so make every day count. And what that may be is about looking at a plan of what it is that you can do in the future that's going to help you to start to under, uh, address the why and understand the behaviours that are repeat in this circle. Because I said to him as well, is honesty, I'm always like to be honest, is because actually, honestly, if you don't change, you're going to do another superficial change and you're going to be a ticking bomb. And at some point in the future, there will be another violent incident. And next time, it might not be a two-year sentence that you got. It could be a lot, lot longer. Yeah, so he kind of uh, uh, sat down afterwards. Like I said, we had a nice cup of coffee. We had a nice kind of chat. Uh, and he kind of really took uh, some uh, understanding uh, in, uh, in what it was that he kind of heard, you know. And he really kind of walked away uh, with understanding and seeing what his Scrooge is, you know. And, uh, and that's what I kind of like uh, uh, about sort of like the Scrooge model, yeah. So what I always say about Scrooge is that Scrooge is a behavior. And we have it in business, okay. So Scrooge is the behavior that stops stopping you yeah from being the person that you really want to be it might be that you have an avoidance behavior yeah so this avoidance behavior okay makes you focus on lots of stuff that doesn't really matter and isn't really important but the avoidance behavior yeah is the one that is doing the most damage okay and then what you do is you justify yeah because screws yeah he, he lives in the shadows yeah he's in the darkness he's in the darkness of your mind that you can't see yeah so what happens is you get all of this avoidance yeah this distraction yeah this noise that you feel that you have to deal with but the truth is is you've got an avoidance because there might be a fear a fear of what it is that you've got to do and that might be that you might does not not totally understand it yeah the fear might be that you might not be able to achieve it there's lots of fear that sits within us and screws feeds on that fear and that's where the avoidance comes in you know because i see lots and lots of business owners there's loads of them yeah right and what it is is they're doing a million things a million things at once yeah and then there don't ever seem to be any productivity there doesn't seem to be any productivity in what it is that they're doing or what it is that they're achieving because they're doing a million things I'll give you an explanation. Eh? Let's, 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 let's think about you decorating your house. Yes, yeah, so what it is, you've got to decorate your whole of your house. Okay? Uh, and what it is, yeah, right, is the best way to decorate your house, yeah, right, is just to concentrate on one room. Yeah? One room, yeah? Because what can happen is in the morning, you can get into that room uh, and you can put your undercoat on the, the walls. Do you know what I mean? You can kind of rub down your uh, skirting boards. You might be able to get a bit of prime on the skirting boards. You know, by the end of the day, you might have been able to uh, whitewash the ceilings and get some gloss around that skirting board. At the end of the day, you look at that room and you think, I've achieved something, yeah? I've got some stuff done. But then what might happen, yeah, right, is this is an avoidance behavior, yeah, when people are doing loads and loads of things, yeah, it's what they do, yeah, right, is they go into the doing, right, I've got to decorate today. So they go in, they paint a little bit of skirting in the front, in the bedroom, uh, and then what they do is they go down into the front room and they put a door handle on, and then they go into the kitchen uh, and they start to rip up the tiles in the kitchen, uh, and then what they do is they go into the front room uh, and they start to uh, paint a little bit of the ceiling. Then at the end of the day, they look at the house and they can't see that they've achieved anything. Can't see anything. And that's because they've been doing lots of little things in lots of different areas. Where actually, if they just focused on the one room, the one area, they may have got some real productivity from it. 
So I suppose that's what I'm kind of talking about with the Scrooge behavior. So that's kind of the uh, the avoidance stuff. And you can kind of tell avoidance people, yeah? So when people have kind of got the avoidance stuff going on, and I can see that they're kind of like headless chickens, yeah? Or what I call it is like a washing machine head. You've got 27 heads, whatever you want to kind of call it. I always say to them, it's better to do one or two things really well than many things badly. And that's what happens when avoidance is going on, because actually we're not very productive and everything is a bit half measured, a bit half cocked, and it doesn't kind of come out the real way that we really want to be able to do it. I'll tell you another screwy behavior. This is a really big one, this is. It's pride. Pride gets in the way of business owners. And do you know what, what pride, what, why pride gets in the way? It's because of things like this. It's about social media. Okay, so within social media, what we really want to be able to do is we want to promote ourselves as being really successful people, that we've got a real successful business, okay, that we've got customers just banging on our doors, yeah, because we are a success. And what happens is pride gets in the way of people being able to be really honest in where they are in their business. Because I bet there's times I've had them where I didn't really understand social media. I didn't really kind of get what it was around my finances and my forecasting. I didn't really understand uh, what it meant about social selling. I didn't really understand about marketing. My God, I still don't really understand about marketing. I've just got to swear then. Marketing, such a big word. There's so many different areas to it. But what happens is people become prideful. And I don't want to tell people the problems or issues that they're having. And there's an old saying, pride before a fall. Because actually, if we can kind of release the pride, we're not going to fall. We're going to be able to link into the support that's going to be able to help us to grow. I've got the quote mind going right on today. Because it's that thing when they say, no man or woman is an island. We all need people. We all need support. Everybody does. We can't do everything on our own. We are not the expert in every single area. We need the help. But the pride can get in the way because it links to vulnerability. We don't want to look vulnerable. We don't want to look weak. We don't want to look like we don't know. These are Scrooge behaviors. Scrooge behaviors that are going to get in the way of you being successful. I'll just kind of let you know a little bit more about the prize stuff as well, because, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I'm qualified as a leader and a manager, okay? And I always say there's a difference between leadership and management. They're two different skill sets, yeah? So they put, they say a leadership and management qualification, but they're two different skill sets. So what I kind of say about leadership, yeah, is that a really, really good leader will understand their limitations. They will understand the areas that they don't know. But as a great leader, what they will do is they will employ or recruit the services of people that can support them in the areas that they're unaware of. I'll kind of explain it in a little kind of short level. So what I always say is most leaders, yeah, their knowledge, I'll go that way, their knowledge is a mile wide and an inch deep. And what that means is that they know a lot about everything but they don't know the huge detail that sits below it. But what a really good leader does is they get people around them whose knowledge might be an inch wide, but a mile deep. And then what happens is the leader starts to understand and use their knowledge in being able to develop the vision going forward. That's why great leaders succeed because they don't have the pride, the pride that can get in the way of them being successful. So yeah, so, uh, so the Scrooge behaviors, you know, and that's why I say I love going into prison because the Scrooge behaviors are there everywhere. They're just in the way all over the place. They're just kind of like stopping people from really being the people that they want to be. Uh, and what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to kind of help people to understand and see their Scrooge. The Scrooge is no longer sit within our minds, no longer sit in a place where we cannot be the people that we really want to be. 
You know, at the moment, if I looked at one of my screws behaviors, it's probably procrastination. Yeah, procrastination. I'm always putting stuff off, yeah, which also links to the avoidance, yeah. I know that there's things that I really need to do, but what it is is I procrastinate and I look for things to take me away from there, yeah. Uh, but what it is is because I understand that behavior, okay, what I'm starting to do is trying to uh, uh, process it in place for myself where I can address that, you know, and, uh, and that might be things like creating default di diaries uh, so that I actually manage that time in my calendar so I actually get on and do the stuff that I need to do because what I also know as well is if you procrastinate and you'll understand of this and it links to avoidance yeah if you procrastinate and you avoid all the time yeah you've got a space in your head you've got this little whiny noise that's going on in your head because you just know you absolutely know that there's something that you've got to do and what it does is that takes up time as well because you've got that in there and you can't concentrate on this but the beautiful thing about taking away the screws behavior and putting in the action is you just quieten that down. You quieten that down and then you can do the one or two things really well rather than the many things badly. So <clears throat> that is a little bit more about the Scrooge uh, behavior change program. Okay, uh, or just you know, it's it's just it's just a way to kind of explain it, uh, and I'm going to be talking a lot about Scrooge in the future uh, because we're really kind of going to link them into sort of uh, how it is that sort of like people can really start to grow and develop within their businesses. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be uh, it for tonight because I don't want to kind of uh, just go on for too long, uh, and I think I've hopefully given you enough content there in relation to you maybe thinking about what is your Scrooge? Where is he? Where is he? I bet he's close by. But what is your Scrooge behavior? Start to think about it. Put it in the box. Type it in the box. Or if you don't want to type it in the box, DM me. Yeah? And I might be able to give you some tips and ideas on how you can address that Scrooge behavior. Yeah, so DM me. Yeah? DM me what your Scrooge behavior is because uh, it's a bit much to be uh, on, on, on there, you know, because you might have a bit of pride and you don't want to show that vulnerability, uh, even though I showed you mine, uh, but you might not want to, so that's okay. Yeah, so just kind of DM me uh, what your Scrooge behavior is, uh, what it is that's getting in the way of you being uh, successful, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of uh, either DM you or give you a call back and give you some free tips and ideas on how you can address that Scrooge behavior uh, and maybe start to uh, overcome it so that you can be the person that you really want to be, okay? Uh, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about now the future of Facebook Live. So like I say, we are going to have these Facebook Lives weekly. Uh, I'm just in the process of inviting some different people to come in and speak. Uh, so we're going to have Faz that's going to be coming in to speak in the near future. He's from the Akash restaurant. Uh, we've got Jenny Hudson that's going to be coming on. Uh, and Jenny does a first aid training. She also does sexual health training for people with learning difficulties. Uh, so she's going to come in and talk a little bit about what it, uh, her journey and, and what it is that she she does. Uh, we're also going to have uh, uh, a gentleman called Louis uh, that, uh, that was uh, Louis, sorry, that was on our business discovery day and also on our 90 day kickstart program. And he's going to kind of do a little bit like what uh, Darren did last week and give a bit of a testimonial. Uh, but what I'll be doing is I'll be putting links out on uh, different people that are going to be coming up. Uh, but this is also about you. Uh, so if there's any business people that you know that you think have got a really good story or a really good business or a really good product, that you think other people could learn and, and, and grow from, uh, then give me their details and uh, I'll get in touch with them and they can be sat next to me here, yeah, uh, and we can have a really good conversation. Uh, so what I will do is I will put up uh, who the guest is on the uh, Facebook Live invite. Uh, if you know anybody else that you think might be interested in this Facebook Live, please invite them in, you know, uh, and hopefully we'll get to meet and see them as well in the future. So. My name is Geffen Jones. This is Synergy Success Network coming to you live and direct from the HQ and saying good night and say farewell to your Scrooge behavior by calling Scrooge Buster. Speak to you later. Bye.